If you are a customer of Cisco products like AM, their firewall, their Snore IPS, you might be very much interested in this particular app. But for this application to work, you need to get the information coming from a streamer and to understand that you need to have this protocol installed. This version, maybe by the time you watch this video there is a new one. Uh, I think that this may be getting to you through auto updates, but if not, or I think better, better still is to run this command rpm and then uh, do a grab for stream for a streamer and check the version if you don't get this uh, in your system you can go to fix central and you can download it and install it you need to install it all you need to do is use the rpm command with the option UVH with uh, UV in capital then the name of the protocol or, or DSM whatever you want to install and that will do the trick but before you can add even if you run out to updates and you have the DSM in your curator system you need to get a certificate with the IP address of your curator box from the guys from Cisco and that is to authenticate you to receive the e the messages from the eStreamer and then you need to actually import that certificate into your system to do that all you need to do is actually run this command that imports the certificate and then an F dash F and put the file where, where I mean, you need to be either on the directory that you downloaded the file or you put the full path here and then you need to put the dash P option with the password that the folks from Cisco gave you to uh, authenticate to that site so you got the protocol the latest version of the protocol you got your certificate with your password you imported it now you're ready to uh, define your Cisco Firepower DSM I already did that in my demo system here let me actually go into the log source app and search here for Cisco and this is it so let me actually show you the parameters I chose you can actually see here basically it's taking all the defaults here on the protocol you need to specify the IP address particularly in here the identifier can be anything but in here you need to put the server that is streaming those that information into your curator box and this will be selected by default the path where you put the certificate what I like about this uh, and this is new in the log source app uh, is that when you are installing this and, and you have and something doesn't work you don't know exactly what it is do I have the right certificate do I have the right uh, credentials do I have the you know the, the, the right connectivity what, what it is and what they have provided is uh, in the log source management app for new DSMs is this uh, test option I'm gonna run it in here notice that it's testing you know okay do I have the, 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 the right certificate? Do I have the right uh, uh, components? This is part of the, the credentials. Uh, um, do I get connectivity to that site where I'm getting the, where I'm supposed to get the, the streamer? Okay, if I do, do I get the connection? And all these are passed, uh, so the stuff is actually working. But this can be very helpful in determining, troubleshooting what is it that is not actually working. Once you've done that, you should start seeing all those events coming into your system. Just to give you a flavor of the type that they are, we can actually group them if 
if I went for the last hour and then you can actually group them by event name and you get a flavor of the actual messages that you are getting from each streamer. At this point we are ready to install the app but before that let me just show you that if I go to my offenses even though this package does not contain any rule the standard rules in Curator let me actually sort these by time uh, these are all things that had been firing in my Curator system by the standard Curator rules that trigger on the data that came from a streamer. So I went here, I authenticated with my credentials and I downloaded the package. Let me actually install it. Here on the admin tab, I click on extension management, I click here add, I have my app host, I go to where I downloaded that file and I click, I can click install immediately and click add, pausing the video to make it a little shorter. Now if we reload the page, we should have here an option for Cisco Firepower. Let's actually go there. And here we have it. Three main areas, threads with some sections of it, network, only one view, and then several options in report. Uh, you have the capability of specifying here a particular IP address, whether it's source or destination. You can set the time frames and you can specify the traffic directory. This is similar to what Curera does with local to local, remote to remote, uh, remote to local, etc. Right? And whether some of those things are being blocked by your uh, firewall. Okay. Now, again, my knowledge on Cisco products is very limited. But in here, you see, obviously, the list of the number of hosts, what kind of IOCs that indicate the presence of malware we have seen. So you have the IP address here. This has been two. This has been three. And you can click in it and see more uh, to get more details of it. Here in the middle, we see over time the IOCs that we've seen. And because we just installed this app, we see that big spike there. So that makes uh, perfect sense. Here on the malware thread, this probably has this data that come from their AMP product when it's detecting malware on the on the actual endpoints, and you get the number of them, and you can click here and again and see more details. And this, I guess, is information that they get from their Snort uh, IPS that indicates the impact of the and the relevance of the particular attack. I did not get data from a streamer to populate these two tabs. Let's actually dive under threats into Context Explorer. We were just looking at the summary. And the app takes a little bit of time to populate all these fields. So what I'm going to be doing is pausing the video to, to make it uh, shorter while it populates. And here we have um, the data in there. I believe you can, yeah, you can zoom in on this map and see more details on that geolocation. And you get the totals in here. Let's actually explore the intrusion events. Um, here we see a very nice timeline of the number of intrusion events and we have different sorted by different categories in here. Let's actually go on to the network option. Very nice view on the activity by source port, by destination port, by priority, by IP uh, IP protocol. And I, this doesn't seem to be quite right. I'm, again, I'm pretty sure that this is the very first version of their app. I'm sure they will be updating, fixing things. Because, uh, and so make sure that you always uh, download the latest one. This is actually very nice network activity. Uh, per user and of course in, in, in your case you will see user IDs in here while well, in this system we only have uh, numbers in here most likely you will see a username there 
again, I don't know much on how uh, the Cisco products work in here. But it, 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 I'm surprised with the amount of not only data that we get, but the richness and the details of all the stuff that is coming from his streamer. And here, let's, let's you know, go into anyone. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna keep the video too long. So let me take the first option in here, and then we see tables of all those uh, those particular reports. Just to keep the video around 10 minutes, I hope that this provides you a head start on downloading, installing, and setting up your QReader app to get all the richness of the information from your Cisco devices.